Welcome to another podcast from the HD Foundation School. I'm your narrator, Nishant Khan. I'm going to read a book called The Railway Children. It's by a very famous English writer, Edith Nesbitt. Now, when I read this book, it will be done in episodes. So, we'll have several parts of this book coming up. So, today we'll focus on the first part. The Railway Children They were not railway children to begin with. They lived near London with their father and mother in a red brick villa with coloured glass in the front door and lots of white paint. The only times they travelled by train were to go to the zoo or to Madame Tussaud. There were three of them, Roberta, the eldest, whom everybody called Bobby. She was perhaps a mother's secret favourite. Peter wanted to be an engineer. Phyllis meant well, but sometimes things seemed to go wrong for her. They had a dog called James and a mother who read to them, helped with their homework and wrote funny poems for their birthdays. Their father was perfect, never cross, never unfair and always ready for fun. They were perfectly happy until one day a dreadful change came into their lives. Late one evening, two men called to see their father. He was busy mending a toy railway engine for Peter. Then a taxi was ordered and father went away in it. Their mother looked upset and was as white as a sheet. She asked the children just to be good and not to ask questions. The children wanted to help, but they did not know quite how. Bobby realized that something serious was making her mother miserable. I say, said Phyllis to Bobby, you used to say it was so dull, nothing happening like in books, now something has happened. I never wanted things to happen to make mother unhappy, Bobby replied. Everything is perfectly horrid. Everything continued to be perfectly horrid for some weeks. Then they were told that their father, who worked for the government, had gone away on a business and might be away on business for a long time. Mother said, don't worry, it'll all come right in the end. She told them they were going away to live in a little white house in the country. All the useful household things were packed up to be taken there in a van. We've got to play at being poor for a bit, she said. They all went down by train. When they arrived, they stood on the drafty platform and watched the red lights of the guard's van disappear into the darkness. They did not guess then how they would grow to love the railway and how soon it would become the centre of their new life. It was a long, dark, muddy walk from the station to their new home. The rough country road led through a gate in the fields to a dark, lumpish thing. Mother said was the house. Three chimneys. There were no lights and the front door was locked. The carter, who brought their luggage, found the key under the doorstep and lit a candle for them. They could hear a rustling and scampering in the walls. What's that noise? asked the girls. Only the rats, said the carter, going out. As the door shut after him, the draught blew out the candle. I wish we'd never come here, said Phyllis. Only the rats, said Peter in the dark. So this is the end of the first part. See you next week. Thank you.